Hey, what's up? I'm back again today, and uh, it's been a while since I last made my last Power Apps tutorial, but now I'm back at it, and I'm, I'm gonna try to uh, make more videos in the future uh, in a, at a faster pace. But now I'm back, and I'm gonna try to do that, okay? So um, today I'm gonna show you guys how to create kind of like a budget tracker in Power Apps, and um, let me go to the screen here. So kind of like this thing right here, uh, how, what, this is what I'm gonna show you guys how to do, and it looks kind of really ugly, and a simple application, but this is because I'm showing you the functionality of how to make it and not really the formatting and you know, make it look nice and the colors and everything. You guys can do that yourself. But today I'm just gonna show you how to make this kind of app and pretty much it's tracking dynamic expenses off of one singular budget. So um, I'll show you guys how it works a little bit here. Um, I'll just go to the play button Okay, so this is budgeting. So this is like a budgeting page. I recommend you put um, these, uh, each of these gray rectangles in a separate page, in their own separate page, but I'm just gonna put it all in one screen to make it easy for you guys to see, okay? So what it's doing here is really, I have our master budget here. So this is our budget, we can change it. It's 10,000, okay? Um, so we're budgeting 10,000 right here and we want it to be able to subtract all the expenses that we're going to list out here and then we want the budget overview which is going to have our total remaining budget left for um, this specific budget so what's cool about this is we're going to be able to actually um, add expenses and then the budget overview with the remaining budget is going to change dynamically So let's do expense 2 and then maybe put 2500 for our amount and then we just add the expense it Goes right into that collection and then the remaining budget changes accordingly as well And then we can also change this. Um, I just added an extra zero uh, So that changes dynamically also so you guys have live budgeting on the go and it changes as fast as the internet connects to whatever device so it's all good i'm going to show you how to make it now it's not that difficult at all but i'm just going to walk you through it step by step let's get started so to do this i'm just going to go ahead and go to a new screen and start from step one which is just adding the label on top so what is this app it's basically just budgeting so that's what i'm going to call it oops let's call it budgeting let's increase the font size a little bit right there and make it so it's able to see. Okay, so that's the title of our app here. Again, on this side, make sure you guys are naming your labels um, and your elements on the page. Makes you organized, and if you wanna change something on the app, it's much, much easier. Um, I'm not gonna do a lot of changing here, but I'll show you guys what I mean. Maybe, maybe you do budget title. Okay, so this label would be budget title, and then you can reference that if you need to reference it somewhere else. You can reference it really easily later. So our next step is to go ahead and put in one of those text inputs so that we're able to change our budget. And this doesn't have to be a text input. It might just be a static number that you guys set in a label or something, but I'm gonna go ahead and make it a text input. So let's go to the text input, erase the default, and then let's change the hint text to budget amount so people know what to put in there. Now, one thing with this um, budget amount is um, we, we only want numbers to be able to be inputted into here. Right now, people can put anything they want, any kind of text. Uh, we want it so they can only put numbers in there because if they put in some text, it might mess up all our formulas and everything. So let's, to, to make it so, so to make it so that um, they can only put in numbers, you just go over to format right here and then you change it to number. It's that easy. Alternatively, you could also go to this drop down and go to the format section and change it. It would have said text like that right there. You could have just erased that and put a number. So that works both ways. And now if we test our app out, I'm typing all this text. It's not coming in until we put in some numbers and it's all good. So I'm going to erase that. It works. Okay, cool. So that's how we're going to name our master budget. So um, we would name that like master budget or something. Okay, let's go make our expenses. So let's say we want to add an expense. Let's go ahead and start off with the add expense part first. So add expense. So we're gonna have the add expense part before we create our collection gallery right there. Um, it's gonna be right there, but um, let's go ahead and make our add expense part. So to add an expense, um, what we basically want is just expense name 
and then expense amount also. So I'm actually going to put text labels over there so that it's easier for you guys to see what it is. Oops. Okay, so that's gonna be our name. I'll make it size 18. So that's the name of our expense. And, it, and then this is the amount of our expense. Okay, cool. Yeah, just get it to line up over there, whatever. Okay, so for the name, let's erase text input, and then expense name for the hint text. Um, we want we want to keep the format text because you know it's a name, so we want people to be able to enter um, any kind of text they want. But for the amount, we do not want that, and we want amount of expense as the hint. We want people to be only able to enter numbers, so let's change the format to number, and that's all good. So we have that there, that there, and that there. Oops, sorry, those three elements right now. Okay, cool, cool. So. Um, next, we're going to create a button, and that button is basically going to be our portal to adding an expense to our collection that we haven't created yet. So this is our button, it's our new button, and we're going to call it Add Expense. So whenever people click this button, theoretically, it's going to add an expense, this expense, to um, our gallery. And this is going to be, um, these are the fields that they're going to be taking, so it's going to take those put it to our collection, which in turn puts it into our gallery. So that's awesome. Now um, let's go ahead and make that gallery. Okay, so this function, this this button right now, when we click on it, it doesn't do anything because we haven't coded anything in it. So um, let's go ahead and do that. So let's click on our button. Um, if, it, if it's not already there, if, um, go to your properties and click on the on select. Right now it should say false if it has nothing on it. So our button says false right now. So what we wanna do is actually code some stuff into our button to create that collection. So to do that, we're gonna throw in the word collect. So that's gonna create our collection. And we need to create a collection right here and let's name it something, whatever we want. Let's call it expense collection. So this is gonna be our, our expense collection and um, that's what we call it. You guys can call it whatever you want. I'm just gonna call it expense collection. So this is creating a new collection. So next we're going to um, create our records. And to do that, we're gonna put in a curly bracket. Make sure it's not a regular bracket like that. There is a difference. Make sure it's um, this curly one right there. We don't want this one, okay? So it's a curly bracket to create like a list of records, an array of records, right? So um, to do that, we wanna put name. So that's gonna be the name of our um, record. It's gonna be like, in, in a data table, it would be the column, right? The, the top of the column and then, yeah. So that'd be the top of the column. We're gonna call it name. And what we want that to be is this box right here, the text inside this box. So I think it's budget title two, I believe, uh, text. Oh, no, it's not. That's that's the name right there. Um, this is gonna be probably text input five then, if I'm correct. Yep, there it is. Okay, so that's text input five dot text. So whenever we click this button, it's gonna create a new column right there called name, and then inside that column, it's gonna make a new row, and inside the name column, it's gonna put in whatever is in this field. So that's our name, and then we wanna make a new one called amount, and this is gonna be text input six dot text. Okay, cool. And so same thing, it's gonna make a new column, it's gonna be called amount, and then it's gonna take in text input six dot text. So let's close out our curly brackets cause that's all we need. And then we're actually done with this function. So um, let's close out our parentheses. So we've closed out our curly brackets right there and then we've closed out our parentheses and that's our collect function. And actually that's all we need to do for the button. Awesome. So we're done with that part, easy beans. Let's go to our collection so we can actually list out our collection here and to do that we're just gonna open up a gallery right there um, you guys can use any gallery you want I'm just gonna go ahead and use a vertical gallery right now so we can list our collection out right here really easily by um, changing our items right here to expense collection which is what we named it in our button so it's just gonna show up right there it's called expense collection it doesn't show anything right now because we haven't actually added anything to it. So um, let's make sure that's working and add something to it real quick. So expense one, let's go for $15,000, why not? 
okay and let's just add something for a budget a hundred thousand this is just testing purposes and we add expense and boom it appears right there so it looks kind of ugly right now we have an image right there that doesn't exist so let's actually change that um, we can change our layout right here by going to the gallery three I have some other galleries in our screen one two and three but if this is your first gallery it's gonna say gallery one um, again you should rename that um, but yeah let's go to our layout right here and then we change our title and subtitle to just that so we can only display those if you guys have more fields that you want to display you can got you guys can go ahead and create those but um, for this for this tutorial we're just going to do two fields and actually I want expense one to be on top and 15,000 to be on the bottom so we can go to the field section edit um, let's change our name and change our amount and just flip them around and there we go so expense one and it's 15,000 right there perfect okay so there it is we have our ad expense and our expense collection right there and it's all working it's all it's all clustered together right so um, whenever we're going to add expenses we can we can just keep adding expenses you guys can add them on mobile if you're at the grocery store you can you can um, literally add it on the go um, for a real business maybe it'd be the I don't know warehouse or something something you're buying and um, it can it can really just let your entire team see what's what's happening in real time so there's no miscommunication there so yeah I just added a second expense let's go ahead and add a third one maybe this one's 5,000 there we go okay let's get some data in there okay so we're almost done with our application. We have all of our data. And now we just want to display it in a different way, which is basically just taking our master budget right here and then subtracting it by all these fields right here. Now, the hard part here is that all of these fields are in a collection. And it's also actually dynamically changing. So every time we add an expense, um, the total amount is going to change also. So we're actually going to have to use some functions in here and not use static expense amounts also. And um, what I just said might sound a little bit complicated, maybe not, maybe so, but in the end, it's not that hard to do. So let's make that part really quick. So let's make a budget overview right there. So this is our budget overview. It's going to have everything in it. I'm going to make this a bit smaller because it's a bit big. Again, I don't recommend putting these on one exact page. I recommend you guys putting this on um, separate pages. So maybe this is on one page, this is on one page, this is on one page, and this is on another page. Um, but just one app so you guys can see everything in this tutorial, okay? So we have our budget overview, and we're going to actually just create some static labels, okay? That are gonna d change dynamically according to what our expenses are here. So we have our budget overview there, and then let's say um, what we're going to want to display is our remaining budget. So our remaining budget is basically just going to be our master budget subtracted by all these expenses in the collection. So um, <clears throat> the hardest part here is that um, the collection is also dynamically changing. So we're going to have to have a function that you know takes that entire collection, adds it all up, and then subtracts whatever that value is from our master budget. So our remaining budget right there is that, and let's go ahead and do that now. So what this is going to be, it's, it's actually just going to be another label because we actually just want it to display a number that's not changeable by the user and it's just changed by function. So yeah. So to do this, we actually just use our text property here and um, we're going to take the sum. So first of all, let's, let's find the total of our expenses. Let, don't worry about the master budget yet. Let's just find our total expenses. So right now our goal is to have this label display all these expenses added up dynamically. And how we're gonna do that is we're gonna use the sum function. Now sum, usually it would be like a number 35 and then comma, let's say 46 or something like that. And then it would just add it up, right? So. 35 plus 46 is 81. Um, what we can also do is actually reach into a collection and then add up an entire column if they're all numbers. And we know that they're all numbers because we changed this formatting in the amount in the amount column. We know that they're all numbers because we changed the formatting of this text into input to be numbers only. So users can literally not enter text. So that's that's why that's our security right there. So that 
our um, formulas don't mess up. How to do this is we basically just take the sum of our expense collection. So that's our expense collection. It's not gonna add up our expense collection since the first argument of our sum function is actually pointing to a collection. It's gonna know that we're gonna wanna add up a column here. So what we wanna do is add a comma right there and then let's point it to our column. And our column name is called amount. So that's all we're gonna say actually, amount. And actually, as you can see right here, it actually just added up that entire column. So 15,000 plus 10,000 plus 5,000 is $30,000. And that's how you do it, guys. That's how you add up um, a dynamic collection that is changing over time. And you can see that if we play this and then add up an expense for, for example, let's make it 75,000 here. Um, you can see that if I add this, it's gonna add 7,500 to that. So right there, there it is, okay? So um, that expense worked that function works but that's that's not the t that's not the last number that we want we want this to be subtracted by this master budget so um, it's not that difficult either you just oh let's go back there you literally just take the text input and this is going to be text input 3 dot text so that's going to be pointing to that and then we want to subtract by the total of all these combined and that's actually all you have to do that's our function right there so you can see that a hundred thousand minus fifteen thousand minus ten thousand minus five thousand minus seven thousand five hundred is sixty two thousand five hundred and that's how you do the master budget guys that's that's really all there is to it but there is one more thing I want to show you guys um, this is just like a plain number I don't like it um, it looks really ugly I want it to be in a currency because this is, this is gonna be in like US dollars or something right so uh, to do that it's not that difficult either there are many ways to do it but this is this is how I prefer to do it so let's do text and then let's put a parentheses right there and basically what we're doing here is taking the text so this is what we want it to display and then comma and this is actually going to be format text, as you can see here. So this is going to be the format text part. And to do this, um, you basically just need to take a formatting text. It's basically the same thing as Excel if you're um, displaying something like a currency. Uh, what we have to do is actually just put a, a parentheses. And you can just copy this directly from me, or it's going to be in the description below. It's going to be this array of characters right there. OK, so it's like a bunch of stuff. What this is basically saying is, please format the text like a regular currency. So we put put that inside of quotations and then let's put a parentheses and that's pretty much it guys, text. This is our text we wanna display, comma, format it like this. That's what it's saying. And then press enter, oh, well, it already entered. And there it is, that's our remaining budget. So that's how you do it guys. Um, I didn't teach you guys how to make this look good or anything, but I taught you guys how the functionality worked. Hope you guys liked the video and hope this is helpful to you in any way, shape, or form. And if you enjoyed this video, please give me a subscribe or a like, comment. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. I'm happy to help. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching, guys. I'm going to try to make more videos in the future very soon and like at a faster pace. It's been like it's been a while since my last Power Ups video, but I will be here to stay. So thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye.